<clears throat> that one of the places where we in science were totally derelict was that we had promulgated this Cartesian duality for almost 400 years and for almost 100 years in the 20th century after the frontier was saying, hey, that's not right. We've got to have something different. And so only now, in the last, in the closing years of the 20th, 20th century, end of the 21st century, have been, a, been able to see within quantum science, and a large portion of it is thanks to Noetic, the Noetic Foundation I set up, who has been researching mind, belief system, these types of experiences, and we're to, we still don't have a great understanding of consciousness. Because, as Colin pointed out, it is a very complex subject. It starts with awareness. We are aware. In the English language, consciousness at its fundamental level is awareness. But it's much more complex than that. We know that all animals are conscious. We've now had experiments that know that all plants are conscious. We know that all matter to some level is conscious because one of the first definitions that comes out of quantum mechanics is the idea that two particles that are in process together and subsequently go across the universe from each other, that they maintain quantum correlation. Now, we in science have called that for 80 years now, that one particle, quote, unquote, knows what happens to the other particle if you do something to it instantaneously. That is the definition of quantum correlation and entanglement. My contribution here is to say, take away the quotation marks. One particle does know what the other particle is doing. It is the very basis, the most fundamental definition of consciousness that we have. In other words, at the particle level, at the photon level, if they are quantum entangled, there is some information being transferred. And that is one of the flaws that 20th century quantum mechanics said is that information can't be transferred in this way. So we've devised all sorts of ways to get that information around. But it is very simple. That is the basis of our intuitive experience. That entangled, we're entangled with everything in the universe. And our subjective, intuitive experience is the basis of it. And it is entangled with other, all of our other sensory mechanisms as well. So a, an entirely new definition of sensing is having to arise out of this basic experience. Now, it's slow going. We haven't converted yet the entire world or even the world of science. But let me point out to you what we are trying to do. In trying to understand consciousness, <clears throat> At one extreme is the Greek philosophic idea of idealism. And it even goes back before the Greeks, but the, uh, the Greeks <coughs> uh, formalized it. And on one, at this is extreme idealism, which says that consciousness is the only stuff, and matter is simply a thought in universal consciousness. If you want to call that God, that's okay. <coughs> but that matter is simply a thought in the mind of universal consciousness. Okay, that's one extreme. The other extreme on the other side is scientific materialism that says that consciousness is simply an epiphenomenon of the collision of particles and we are conscious by accident. Okay, here are the two extremes. And I take the position they're probably both wrong. Somewhere in between, somewhere in between, we will find reality as we experience. And that's what science is all about. Test, theorize, test, experiment, and slowly squeeze down your definitions till you don't have anomalies coming out of your theoretical structure. But science progresses by theorizing, testing, and then finding anomalies that says, oops, our theory isn't quite good enough yet. 
do some more theorizing tests and we'll keep squeezing it down. But at this point in time, as I said at the beginning of my talk, we are still just barely out of the trees. We think we're pretty smart. And we are in many ways. In this last hundred years, we have done some pretty amazing things. However, let's go a little further. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were just about, just under two billion people on this planet. Do thanks to, to the science and the medical science in particular of the late 19th and throughout the 20th century and in, now into the 21st century. The population has exploded from two billion people at the beginning of the 20th century to six and a half billion people at the end of the 20th century, a threefold, over a threefold increase. And the best evidence suggests to us <coughs> that the planet with all of its magnificent resources can sustain with the lifestyles of the industrial societies, only two billion people. So we are in deep trouble with sustaining our civilization as we understand it, and something's gotta give. And it's up to us to cause it to happen. <laughs>